Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson here, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast on javascript.info, a modern JavaScript tutorial. We are working in part two, connecting our JavaScript to what's happening in the browser, specifically the web page, and we are into section 1.7, modifying the document, a very important lesson. So far in our lessons, we have directly modified some of the elements on the web page. But what if the element does not exist on the web page? What if you want to add a new paragraph or add a new list item to an existing list as if you were adding items to a shopping cart? That's what this lesson is going to talk about. Let's look at our file and let's look at our JavaScript. So far, I just have this HTML. What if we wanted to add another list item after this unordered list inside of web development? Step one, when you want to create a new element on a page, is to use the document.createElement method. Argument for the createElement method is whatever element you want to create. I'm going to assign that to a new web dev variable so I can further modify that new element before I add it to the page. Step two then is to create a text node, which will be the text inside the element. For step two, I'm going to declare a new variable called new text and assign it to document create text node. The argument inside the text node is whatever text you want to go inside the element. Here's two new methods that are very valuable and very common. At this point, I've got an element node and a text node in my JavaScript environment, but they are not connected. So the next step is to take that variable, that new element, and append, use the append method to append whatever text node you've created. Now I have the element and the text node connected in my JavaScript environment. Step three is to add any new HTML attributes as desired. For example, you might want to, on that element node, add a class of web. So it's styled the same as these other list items that have a class of web. Or add an ID attribute. Step four, then, is to add that element with its text node and with any HTML attributes that you desire to the web page. So step four, I'm going to take my web dev variable. Web dev is pointing to this unordered list and append the new web dev variable, which is an li with a text node with these attributes to the page. I'm going to say save and refresh, and there we go. I've got the new web analytics list item with the appropriate attributes in my HTML page. And if I inspect the page and point to that list item, I can see I've got the ID of analytics, I've got the class of web established in these two statements. One thing to mention in step two, there's two alternative ways of adding the text node to the list item. I can create the text node and then append it to the list item. The benefit of that being that now that I've got that text node as a variable, I can do other things to it, or I can accomplish the same thing with one statement by taking that variable name and setting its text content property to data analytics. And I just made it data analytics instead of web analytics so that when I save and refresh this page, we can see that it still worked. And it does. Those are two alternative ways of adding the text to the list item. All of these things are discussed in the lesson. In addition, many different methods to determine the placement of where the element is being appended in the web page. But the steps themselves are basically the same. Create the element, create the text node and append it or change the text content property, add any attributes that you want, and then when you have the full package, when you have that full object developed in your JavaScript, then append it to the web page. From a performance standpoint, I think it's a little bit faster if you develop your element and do all of your work inside the JavaScript environment before you append the full package to the web page. Every time you touch the DOM from JavaScript, you're gonna get a performance hit. The lesson also talks about document.write. I have an entire YouTube just on that one method, the write method of the document object, because it is so commonly used in chapter one of, of many JavaScript textbooks. The write method is very limited in use and is usually used as a proof of concept to make sure that your JavaScript is talking to your web page. I much prefer to use console.log for that purpose as stated in previous YouTubes. So I'll let you explore that on your own. Thank you.